103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, March 14th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Daughter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello, everybody. How are you today? <laughs> He looks like a puppet. Yeah. Uh, for the radio audience, <laughs> he was using a filter that made him look like a puppet. Okay, and with us today is our guests, our George 1 and 2 and Scott. Hello, all. Hello. Actually, it's, uh, what is it, Brooklyn? Oh, not Brooklyn. I'm Brooklyn, Brooklyn and Buffalo. Buffalo, Buffalo, that's right. Okay, um, radio, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. Mm. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you more about how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Uh, if you'd like to interrupt, interrupt, interact with us during the show, Either one uh, go, to, go to Facebook, search for our Digital Free Thought Radio Hour page, and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Uh, Wombat, what do you have for us today as far as topics go? Yo, I want to talk about a really interesting thing that was brought up in last week's show when Boudreau brought up the idea of... Uh, uh, pig farmers <laughs> and how uh, religion was thinking about like, hey, you know, there's the argument could be made that back in the day, you don't want to have gay pig farmers. You just want to have pig farmers. <laughs> and he was sticking it out. And I just thought it was the funniest analogy that he was coming out. He didn't, <laughs> he, he, we all we eventually came to something a bit more concrete, but it did touch on something a little more interesting, which was why does religion have an issue with gay people in the first place? Like, what is the rationale behind it? And if it's not pig farming, like, what is, like, the actual reason for it? And so I want to go over that along with a bunch of other topics today. But I do want to touch bases with how everyone's been doing since uh, the last time we've talked. Buffalo, we'll start with you. How have you been? How's daylight savings time treating you? You look perfectly quaffed, if I think is the right word for it. Uh, it's been fine because my wife changes the clocks. Otherwise I wouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> nice. Nice. But, but, uh, yeah, no, I've been fine. Been breaking out a little bit. Both my wife and I have had both shots and, and mm -hmm. so we're, uh, but when we, we've been to two restaurants in the past year and that was all in this past week. Uh, but, uh, we call them up and ask them what time they had the fewest number of people there. And so we're, beginning to re-enjoy going and eating out. Nice. Are you hmm. sort of missing the opportunity to not go outside anymore? Like there's no longer an excuse to just be like, ah, but I can totally skip that bar mitzvah or I could, I don't have to help that person move anymore. Like, isn't that, wasn't that a great excuse? Um, I don't know. I think uh, <laughs> to, to, since I'm retired, I don't spend that much time out in Fair public uh, anyway. So I guess I, I, re I really hadn't thought about it that way, but Fair enough. no, we've, uh, we've just, we've enjoyed being able to get back out and see the grandkids a little bit more and that sort of thing. That's good. It's an issue of choice. Now you can choose to go out. Yeah. Right. Scott, we'll, we'll throw it up at you. What new music or weird gadgets or stuff that you got now going on? Oh man, we've got all kinds of gadgets. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you've got the button. Got <laughs> Got the new sequence. Oh, room. oh, oh, that's a new thing. That's brand new. Oh, yeah. That looks brand cool. new. Okay, so yeah. it looks Visual, like a keyboard. Visual age for radio. It's a keyboard with <laughs> buttons on the top. It's very, very yeah, interesting. It's, a, it's called a sequencer, the uh, Arturia uh, Key Step 37. But yeah, I've um, <clears throat> released a album. I, uh, it's oh, distributed wow. all over the place Amazon, iTunes, everything wow. like that. So you can get it. Um, also on, of course, my uh, band page. Um, so I've been doing that and the remixes for old CC Peniston is coming out soon. Uh, CC Peniston was an old dance music artist in the nineties. And okay. so we worked out a licensing deal and actually releasing that soon. And then 
other stuff. So yeah, the music is really keeping me excited and busy and all of that all week long. So I got the same question for you that I got for Buffalo. Now that, you know, we are beginning to see a, uh, a light at the end of the tunnel, as far as COVID is going, are you going to, feel sad that you won't have as much time to just be processing and buying stuff and setting up your music anymore. Now you're going to have to go outside and actually do things like interact with people. Oh my gosh. What, what right, you right, right. Home and making music. What's going on? How do you feel? Well, about that's that? the fun thing is that um, this gave me the opportunity to really mm -hmm. just get my little arsenal together and get my plan together, forced me into that, into that mode. So now air, the groundwork is laid. Nice. Hopefully as you know, we'll be able to do out, outdoor functions. I'll be able to like gig and oh, get out there nice. and do stuff. And that's the plan. I want to definitely get out there and, and perform and all of that good stuff again. So have, Scott, what's the name of your fun. album before we move on? Yeah. It's called collapse reality. Oh. Okay. <laughs> collapse reality. So it's like an electronic um, music, like different genres of electronic music is what I'm exploring on that one. So it's a little jazz. There's a lot of jazzy sort of chord progression with it, nice. and then there's also some really strict dark electronic. There's some melodic electronica. Um, yes, yeah, different different little flavors on that on that record. It's always a hard thing to describe what your music sounds like with words, isn't it? It's just like, uh, so, you know, if Dave Matthews went to third grade in, in New York, it would sound like that mixed with like lemonade. It's just like, what are you talking about? It's like, Oh, you got to listen to song to understand it. It's like, Oh yeah, I see. I hear it. I, I feel your pain. And we'll have you happy to play your, any of your music on the show. Just let me know, send me something and we'll be able to play it during the break. No doubt. George, how you been since last week? I heard you got in a fight. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I have three things to mention, so I'll try to make sure. them all real fast. Okay. Uh, the first one is um, I've gotten my COVID shots, my second one, three weeks ago. Fantastic. And um, I want to report that I had side effects uh, 24 hours after the second shot, and the side effects went away 12 hours after that. Fantastic. And the side effects that I had were pretty much what's on the CDC website. Take cool. it for, you know, give it a heads up, guys. Um, which which, uh, which vaccine did you get? Ooh. It was the Moderna. I got Moderna too. Yes. Um, the second thing I want to mention is that uh, right before I came, came to join you people, I was listening on YouTube to Bach's Easter Oratorio, and I regard, like many other musicians, I regard Bach as the ultimate composer of all time. Mm. And um, not Bruno if, Mars. If but no, no, okay, Bach. Strictly. We have opinions. And uh, among musicians, it's virtually unanimous in my experience. Charlie Parker loved Bach, by the way. And uh, if I were alive in the, I guess it was the 17th century, and I went to church and listened to Bach every week, I would not be an atheist. And that's Whoa. that's where I'm at. Uh, the third thing was that, yes, last Sunday, I was at a local meeting in my rural county of progressives, and I was attacked. I, um, I inadvertently stuck my stick, my... my um, I, I, I stuck my innocent stick into somebody else's beehive. Okay. And that person attacked me, and that person happens to be a psychotherapist. Did wow. you just call that person a psycho and then try to make it okay by <laughs> saying therapist afterwards immediately? So she's a, uh, she's a psycho bank teller. It's like the, mm, the moral still a mean thing to say. The moral of this story is that if if you're in therapy and you start feeling really bad about yourself, start thinking about where the therapist is at. Okay. And um, you know, if she's uh, sure. got a chip on her shoulder, get out of there. Yeah. You got to be aware, be right. aware of that. You got to yeah. browse for the right therapist. Okay. I Daughter, hope I'm not dominating the conversation too much. So I'm stopping. Yeah. Daughter five. I want to throw it out at you. It looks like you're eating food. You're still combing your hair. What's going on. Did we catch you by surprise? You did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was caught off time uh, by an hour uh, due to daylight savings time. Sure. But I had changed all the clocks in the house, except the living room. And I was in the living room and I was mm. looking at the clock. So you got me. I'm lucky so enough still, to have I'm a still cat. Still primping, still my eating. Cat, my alarm clock <laughs> is my cat. 
And so, mm. like, I have a lock <laughs> that will switch to daylight oh. savings time automatically. Yeah. It will ring, and my cat's like, five minutes later, I should have food coming out of my mm. automatic food disposal. Mm. He runs straight to it, and he's just like, oh, I, I, I already got fed an hour ago. Shouldn't I get yeah. more food? It's like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> no uh, he starts biting. I at, uh, yeah, I was up at seven. I just didn't keep an eye on the time. Mm. Um, no, I got my second uh, Moderna shot this week. I also Man, had gosh. side effects, uh, chills. Um, uh, chills were the worst, mm. but uh, for for about 24 hours after I got it, and for another 24 hours, I had them, so it wasn't too good. Let me but tell you it's over. It's over now. I so. got my shot. I even posted the video on on the internet. My second Moderna. And I didn't get a single symptom. I feel really bad because you're supposed to get symptoms. I <laughs> As you should. <laughs> I was looking forward to getting sick. I called ahead to work ahead of time being like, I can't show up to work, guys. I'm like, no, 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 Tyrone. You got to stay home. I'm like, cool. I got my bed ready to go. I had like, I went grocery shopping. I had a whole bunch of like yogurts. I was like planning food out perfectly for like <laughs> building antibodies. I was ready to get sick got the shot, come home, nothing. And I was just like, well, this is disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I wa- My only complaint is I wished I was sicker. So uh, uh, got a sore arm. So at least I knew that was working, but yeah, for the most no. part, uh, nothing. I was, I was ready to go to work the next day. We're different ages and that may be the key here. Yeah. There's a uh, tiny, tiny, tiny person at our job who got the shot and was completely devastated. And I'm like, it's the same volume for me and my giant arm. What was her, her what her was his or her age, Tyrone? Uh, sh- younger than I am, maybe like in the late twenties. And so, okay, so I was like, not it. it's weird that the same volume of shot goes into every, every different phenotype of person, <laughs> but it works. And I'm happy. Hey, can you imagine the distribution it. system? If that was a consideration? Uh, <laughs> well, well, for some reason, I, and I don't mean this in a bad way, they put old the old people first, and I'm like, okay, that's great, that's great, that's great. But they're the old person by, uh, shot is the same as the young person shot, and it's just like mm. maybe there should so, have been so like I, some sort of thoughts behind this. But hey. I, I got the Pfizer, and I'm 77, and I didn't feel a thing. So I don't, nope. I don't think the ages. I, I wonder, and I've read this that. What might be a factor is how you how constantly you tickle your immune system. So if you get out and you walk in the woods and you breathe in spores and you give it lots of things for your immune system to normally attack, it it, it may be better prepared for um, an attack by an artificial. Yeah, one of, one of the vaccine. good reasons for children to play you. outside. That's yes. right, and not to cover the cat box at night. <laughs> Not to cover the cat box at night. This is this is next level. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> Guys, let's get into the topic of the show. We're going to be talking about why do why do we think? Oh, I got everybody right. I did get everybody right. Great, I did. Uh, why do we think that uh, religion actually does target gay people specifically? And so the reason why we were talking about that yesterday was we we're trying to come up with an idea for why religion tends to like make enemies of certain groups of people. And they have a thing for gay people, <laughs> which is like its own thing. Larry, Doubter Five, what do you got? Well, the earlier religions are religions from 2,000, 2,500 years ago. Uh, their leaders were preachers. They were cultists, basically. They were pure, uh, purer than the average man. They, they uh, had certain strictures amongst their some. Um, man and woman, uh, nothing shall be uh, against the joining of those two. Um, Man on man love is not good. So they wrote the book, Hmm. basically. And now we're living 2,500 years later under the thumb of long dead preachers. And, you know, all you have to do is look in um, Leviticus and several other places, Deuteronomy in the Bible to find out that they just don't like gays and don't want to have... people do anything in that vein so they 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 probably probably were they probably were chasing their fantasy at the same time right maybe could be they don't protest too much that's a spicy take (laughs) buffalo i want to come back to that but larry Mm -hmm. i feel like that explains the how we've come to have religion that hates gay people Mm -hmm. some guy wrote it in the book Mm -hmm. why did they target them in the first place why do you think Uh, that was the case Maybe it's just the purity of their cult and their uh, devotion and their, the direction it's supposed to take. Why? Who knows? 
Mm. Doesn't it say in the Bible, man shall not lie with a man? Yeah, that's that what it? I'm referring to. That, that the that where's that, where's that Some guy wrote from? that in a book somewhere. <laughs> Why did they write that? Where is that in the Bible? A uh, Google search will tell you. I don't know. Yeah. Offhand. I think it's I mean, Leviticus. It doesn't really matter. I think it's Leviticus. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Buffalo, I'd like to go back to that spicy point that you made. You said they were potentially envious like what was going on there what was that money <laughs> not envy that, that they had a, they, they had a secret pra, uh, for fantasy that they were practicing while they told everybody not to practice it now there is groundwork for this because before christianity took over uh like you go into greek society even spartan society pediatry gay gay, gay men hooking up men, women hooking up that was like an expected societal norm Right. And, and if you think about like, where is it that, and when Rome took over Greece and then began to foster what we now have as Christianity, like the, the bedrock of people relationships were not so marginalized as you can only have man and woman. Like that is a fairly novel concept in the culture of humanity. <laughs> maybe in the last like round, maybe say 5,000, maybe I would say 3000 years where it started people being like, Hey, this is the best way. This is not the best way. These are the ones that we need to punish. These are the ones we don't need to punish. So I think there yeah. may be some groundwork that because I would Even not be surprised. Native Americans, they, they called them two spirits, um, yeah. a man and a woman in the same body. Mm -hmm. So yeah, George, what do you got? Um, you know, I've been thinking while you're talking that uh, in a world where they're divided into us and them, uh, there are people who have a lot of, to gain from attacking them, right? You know, uh, it gives them more power. They they, they, exactly. they focus other people uh, this way, and um, so it's important for them to have a them to point right. fingers at. Right, you, they'll you know? create one if they don't have one. Right. They'll create one if they don't have one. Maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. And in my like, opinion, the thing that gay people have never had in their in their benefit was numbers. And I think that's what makes them the easy target because they were a minority that didn't have a voice that were easy to target and would have no chance of propagating in the future. <laughs> just, just on the basis of you know, how things work. And yeah, so it's I like, understood. here's a great group to target that we don't have to worry about in the long term. And while we target them, people will flock to us because they are an easy target. Uh, Scott, um, I, want, I want to make one last point before we jump to you, but I'm thinking the reason why they do that is the us and them mentality. Cause if it wasn't gays, it'd be Jews. If it wasn't Jews, it'd be Saxons. If it wasn't Saxons, it'd be albinos or women. They would find a group of people wow. regardless to, to support the ideology of we are the good side. They are the bad side. Join us because we have this basal human programming that wants to be on the good end. And in order to do that, we need to find something to, to, to demonize or, or, or attack we have a really unfortunate system where it's like, we want to know where the tigers are in the jungles. And we'll, we are so desperate to know where the threats are that we're willing to overlook our commonalities and exercise empathy so that we can make sure that we're on the side that is observant of a threat because that makes us feel safe. And that is a problematic situation that religion loves to strive on itself on. Scott, what do you think about that? And uh, what's your opinion? Well, I was just thinking here, um, <clears throat> that not all religions um, mm -hmm. condemn homosexuality. Very true. Like, for example, in Buddhism and Hinduism, homosexuality is never directly forbidden in any text. And um, but there is a range, and there's a particular at particular times, uh, Buddhist and Hindu cultures may have looked at homosexuality as um, a defilement or a um, uh, some sort of um, disobedience to nature, some kind of genetic fallacy or something they would, you know, but this isn't really expressed in the, uh, in the uh, text themselves that they base those religions on. Hmm. But I think that most of what you're going to find with um, homosexuality being like a sin or wrong is in these Abrahamic religions sure. where they even have concepts of sin. You know, so they look, and even in those, like I was speaking to a um, uh, 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 Bible scholar last week. Um, he he's a um, Old Testament and um, Sumerian um, Bible scholar. We call him Doctor Josh. 
And he was saying that actually, even in the Abrahamic religions, um, that was homosexuality and prostitution was a norm. It was called temple prostitution in Judaism. And male, male prostitutes would be in the temple um, doing that. And then it just evolved over time politically to kind of get rid of that practice and condemn it and call it like a sin. Um, but it, it was an ever evolving thing. So even in Abrahamic religions, not homosexuality was always considered bad, sure. you know, at some point mm -hmm. in time. George, you want to weigh in? Yeah, I just have a question. Uh, where are Unitarians in all this? And, and coming right after that, is, is Unitarianism, is that a religion? You know what? I would say it's definitely a congregation that has a philosophy or a dogma that's more about accepting different points of view. It doesn't have a set. It's not a, as straightforward as like standard the forms of theism. But like if you're an atheist, you can go to Unitarian and have a really good time. And they're very open with gay people, too. And so like it might be worthwhile just to have that. That's a good point, George. Larry, what do you think? I was just going to say that they leave the dogma, as it were, up to the individual. You can believe whatever you want. Mm. They just, wow. they're all about interfaith congregations. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that they do agree on, uh, Unitarian Universalists, is that everybody's going to heaven, no matter what you believe. <laughs> you believe that? I mean, no, that's it, really. I did not know that. I did not know that. That was a thing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, have, have a good time, get together, be with your fellow man, don't worry about what they believe. Yeah. Well, you're unconscious. So can it, I join? It's, it's, yes. No, let, hold on. I went <laughs> Anybody to Anybody can join. So the Unitarians <laughs> in Kentucky, I only went to one Unitarian church, so it's not representative of everybody. But the ones I was there did definitely have Christians there, but every single person I talked to was atheist when I just asked them flat out. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I'm an atheist. Well, I'm like, the, yeah. So that's, that's cool. That's why I went the first time. Everybody told me that atheists were welcome. Yeah. And the, what's really funny was the very first time I went, uh, you know, they they had a going away. It was spring, so they had a lot of people moving out after school. Mm. So they, what they do is they let a person or two give a sermon in their own faith mm. uh, before they leave. So what did I get the first time I went? Baptist Christianity. No way. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my my home upbringing. Upbringing. Wow. So it wasn't much different. You had some at comments. least the lecture, but everybody else was nice. Okay, that's cool, Scott. I did want to throw something at you. Uh, yeah, I don't think Buddhists have documented anything against gay people, though their appreciation of women in, in at least in their their structure, their their culture is not one of esteem. And so, like, we always look at, hey, if I say Buddhist monk, you're not thinking of a woman. <laughs> you're not thinking of a woman with a shaved head. There's a reason for it. And so it's like, it's a different brand of targeting. But it, while it, the topic of the show was, why is it against gays? I don't think there's, like, really any group that that benefits from, you know, just a complete, you know, equilateral, non-blaming or damnation of any kind of group. I would even say this. Just as a, as a weird point, the deaf community, not the whole deaf community, but there are aspects or fringes of the deaf community that will look down on a deaf person who just got a cochlear implant, which is a surgery that allows a person to hear again. Because, really? there's a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of mistrust because similar to like, well, I don't want to get into even more, more weeds, but there has been a history of people testing on people who have disabilities uh, in non-moral ways and inhumane ways. And the deaf community was brunt of that, especially for, you know, the mistreatment of just being called dumb. Like the word dumb comes from a connotation of a person who can't speak. And yet we still use the word dumb when it refers, when there was a word taken from what we would refer to as a deaf person. Yeah, so wow. like there's been a lot of mistreatment against that culture that's been ingrained and internalized. And so when science finally comes back after, you know, a period of time of very bad mistreatment and says, Hey, we figured out a way to cure you. That is one, something that's very offensive to a lot of deaf people because it's like, Hey, this is my identity. What do you mean you're curing my identity? Are you making my skin lighter and I'm not going to be black anymore? It's like, I would be immediately <laughs> affronted by that. But there's also the idea of like, Hey, I just want to be able to communicate with people. I want to be able to, I still learn sign language. I'm still deaf. I still have my family, but now I can hear. It's like, Oh, but now you're, you're one of them. Now you're one of the hearing people. Now you're not. Never would have thought that. That is a thing. And it's really unfortunate. It's not a reflection of the entire community. Absolutely not. In fact, but it is a thing. 
also there's like if you're a coda um i'm i'm quasi coda my mom's hard of hearing so uh, coda means child of a deaf adult um you are seen as less deaf <laughs> or there's a tiered bracket of you're not as exceptional as a deaf person who who can't hear in both ears and knows sign language and doesn't talk like there are levels in place gallaudet university had this really big fiasco where their new uh, dean was a person who could speak but was a deaf woman like she was a deaf woman, but she also knew how to talk. And the school kicked her out of the position just because she was a speaking person because she wasn't deaf enough. So there are, in fact, even in any community that you go to, yeah, us versus the tests. Yeah, and Important. levels, levels of um, being oppressed. You know, like levels of victim, victim identification, striations, dude. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. striations. That's a good word for it. Yeah. And we need to get out of that. Oh, Scott, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, I was just gonna say what you seem to be pointing to is the fact that every human institution, including all religions, mm. um, have some form of social um, uh, codification yeah. involved in it. It's almost like it, it always comes hand in hand with a human institution, whether that be uh, a political organization or even a humanist organization, even yeah. oh, absolutely. You know, all, all sorts of human institutions have this social um, the social codes that they go by. And it's just so interesting that, but you know, that just kind of points again to how religion, if we were to get it back to religion, religion is just a human organization. It's just, it's just a human a, institution. It's a product of a human mindset. And you know, it's a big it's, clan. It's a, big it's a big, <laughs> it's a big clan that has many sects. Yeah. That's right. But it's such a, totally marked as a human product. Like when mm -hmm. we say, here's a spiritual thing that brought down from us, by the way, I'm going to wear the Santee hat. You're the tier one people. You're the tier two. It's like, that's what humans do. <laughs> no, what a spiritual being would try to come up with. That's, that is a human thing that we always tend to do. And so we got self credit or discredit, yeah. whatever, yeah, you yeah, want, yeah. however you want to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, this is brought out very well in an evolutionary sense in the book mm -hmm. Sapiens by uh, Harari. Uh, where he puts this all in the context of, of, of uh, human evolution, mm -hmm. that uh, you know we, we, we needed clans, we got clans, and we still have now many, many more different kinds of clans, and we probably will always have them. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Well, hopefully we can at least have them not be as big a part in the way how we think and see each other. Like we can still have them like we have eyebrows, but we may not need to use them as a way to determine value in each other. And I think that's the most important distinction. Larry. I like that um, what we're talking about is some um, self-knowledge in a way, you yeah. know, that uh, w one thing that I would like to see is that everybody on this planet understands themselves. Yeah. You know, um, I'm working on it myself at my old age. You know? it's, a, it's a never ending process to, to learn to love yourself and know yourself. And, and if it was easy, everybody would do it. <laughs> a lo lot of people are, are not doing it. And a lot of people aren't doing it. So, and we can't do it for them, but we, at least we can do is make sure that, you know, we can, we can start with ourselves. And I think that's yeah. the most important part. Uh, now the word humility uh, is, uh, is appropriate here. And, and I wonder as a biologist, I wonder how humility ever came to be. Hmm. Yeah, that seems like a weird thing. And is what there... does it even mean? What's the definition of humility? Hey, <laughs> well, let's, I, I let's guess that, uh, let's make that a topic for the future. We got to take a break. Okay. Though. <laughs> Larry, Larry, why you uh, take it out? Yeah. First, why don't you lean back a little bit and let's see what it says behind you? Sure, sure, sure. Here we go. Let's chat podcast. Okay, great. Now, I just know that half an hour into uh, our show on YouTube, uh, people will be wondering if they're not watching it on your side. <laughs> that is there any way you mind. can offset that? That would be very like yeah, the Tonight Show is offset. You know? Sure, 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 sure. I can, I can come up with that. Okay, this is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. 
Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, March 14, 2021. Now let's talk about the atheists and free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there is the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings that you can participate in to join the group or just want to come in. Find us on Facebook by looking for Knoxville Atheists, or just do a Google for Knoxville Atheists and you'll come across us. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville, the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Go to Facebook or go to rationalist.org to find out more information about that group. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Knoxville Atheist video show. Well, you can find their archives here at YouTube. Uh, just search for Knoxville Atheist or Knoxville's Freethinker Coalition of Knoxville. I guess that's a double. But anyway, you can find it by searching for archives of our show. And... Uh, We'll hopefully we'll see you there. If you'd like to get involved with this show or the or the TV show, just come to an ASK meeting or RET meeting and let us know that you're interested. Um, that's about it. Where do you want to pick up there, Wombat? I want everybody to give me an F. F? Give me an A. Hey. 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 Give me an N. N. What does that spell? Yeah. <laughs> what a fan, what a fan, what a fan, what a mighty good fan. Fan mail. My mighty good fan. My whatever. Hey, I want I want that song sung with even more less enthusiasm, please. What a fan, what a fan, what a, fan, what a mighty good fan. What a mighty, 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 mighty good fan. Nice, everybody. So nice. Mm-hmm. Everyone's so great on this show. I love it. So we're gonna be going over what was it, Larry? What was what? Listener fan mail. Exactly. Oh, that's right. Fan mail. <laughs> <laughs> He's still getting used to daylight savings time. Yeah, We're going to give him some yeah. time. No, anyway, uh, we got this picture that was posted to our messenger group. It said, Pope Francis holds landmark meeting with Iraq's top cleric, Sistani. And uh, I made the comment that this was the greatest meeting of people playing pretend of all time. And, <laughs> and Bruce had a great, great question that I thought put me in my place a little bit too, because he asked, do you think the Pope is actually pretending God exists? Or do you think the Pope genuinely believes God does or some other option? And I was like, you know what? You're right. I can't get into the Pope's mind. I can't figure out what he actually does believe, but I can say from the consistency of his actions along with other popes in the past, that they do not meld well with what is being purported in the modern interpretation of Catholicism in terms of what they support and what they don't support. There's a lot of really, there's a really great history of notoriously bad popes or notoriously corrupt popes. And destructive terms, popes. And destructive yeah. popes and warring popes and just very Mur- downright murderous. mistrusting Trump. Murderous Trump. Indeed. It's so bad, so bad. It's a really, really, really bad collection. It's a really, really bad pope. <laughs> But uh, uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, I just haven't found a lot of consistency between, hey, love everybody. You're everyone's brother and sister, and we all should get along with each other. And there's there's bad people that we can help, but we will do so in the best way possible. And we should use our money to be able to support the poor and all this. We don't see that. We don't see that. I think uh, he needs a better haberdasher, you know. Maybe he needs like a bigger hat. Maybe yes. <laughs> the other guy's got a big bigger hat. <laughs> yeah, there's the problem. That's the problem. It is funny that you got a guy who wears white, 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 and the guy who wears black is just like my thing doesn't stain, and stains are a really big problem here. It's like, well, I have tons of people who will clean my clothes for me. It's like, what's going on here? What what, what are the uh, thought processes? Anyway. The difference is the beard. So the the, the guy in black has a, a soup catcher. Ah, there you go. <laughs> It's weird also, this little box of napkins is like the most important box of napkins right now. It's just like, yeah. this box a tissue graduated to be able to sit between these two people. Yeah. And what's, what's surprising is they both uh, theoretically worship the same God, but everything else from there on down is, is different. Yeah. It's a weird situation that we're in. Scott, I'd love to get your feedback on what you think about the Pope. Do you think he's pretending God exists? Do you think he genuinely believes God exists? Or is it some other option? 
Well, um, generally, I would just grant people if they say that they believe something. <laughs> and just as a rule of thumb, I always grant people <laughs> whatever they say, you know, because I can't read their mind either. Not way. Authority Only, what you believe, right? Yeah. So I would just grant that he believes in God and Catholicism and stuff like that, even even despite the behavior because of things we know about how the brain works and how we do other than what we say we believe. It's all an after story for our behavior. But um, as far as his belief, I don't know. I would say I don't know, but I'll just grant him that he believes in God. Sure. I, you know what? I can give him the leniency of sure you believe it, but it's also, but it is also a question of why do you believe it? Mm -hmm. And if your book is purporting everybody should believe this, why is it that you don't have a reasonable reason for why you believe this as well? And it would seem to me that if you cared about what your book believes, especially as the leader of a figure that's trying to spread Catholicism across the world, that you should have a good reason to, to, to be convinced that it's true. And if you're not working on that, in any meaningful capacity over the last thousands of years, there's a problem with your conduct, sir, because you don't seem to be meshing well with what it is you are representing. Doesn't and walk the walk. <laughs> yeah, that was always going to be a problem with me. Buffalo, do you have any uh, final thoughts on this? Yeah, again, I, I, I bring back the biology argument of the uh, normal distribution curve, the Gaussian <laughs> curve. And, and I, I think that I, I, you know, you've got to have people at, at the extremes. And so you can have a murdering pope and you can have a very uh, uh, loving pope. Not that I think this one is, but no, I, would love I, I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't question his, uh, his actions because I think they are uh, humanist reactions or they can be um, construed in that way. Um, and, I, and so he's different from many of the men that have preceded him. So what, in what area of human history uh, is that not the case right mm -hmm. so i think he's just i think he's close to the end of the uh, the distribution curve uh, that is uh, so more pure thinking um mm. and so I, I guess i would i'll give him the the benefit of the doubt uh, uh, from that point of view i think larry has a uh, philosophy where it's like the more you're exposed to just the variety of different people and you try to appease general public in general the further you're pulled away from your specific dogmatic ideology, which makes you more in kind with how we want to treat each other and less involved with how your book wants you to treat other people. Right. The better kind of a person you are. Right. And the so farther you I, leave your dogma behind. And I, and I wouldn't make the argument, in fact, I would support the argument that this is the most worldly pope that we have. I mean, he's traveling the world, he's shaking hands with people, he's meeting people, he's shaking presidents and stuff like that. He has access to people and information more so than any other pope in history. And we might be seeing that rubbing off on him compared to anyone else. But hey, weird thoughts. Uh, Buffalo, I'd actually like to go off of what you were saying in the first half of the show before we go into any other topics. You were talking about humility as a potential genetic defect, right? Like, why is there any evolutionary advantage to humility? Before we begin, maybe George, would you like to define what you think we mean about humility? And we'll just do a quick review of what we think, what we mean by humility. I'm, I'm at a loss for okay. words for that, but sure. I'd love to hear what your definitions are. Uh, I would say humble, um, ability to separate yourself from your ego, uh, ability to learn at the deficit of maybe what your, your self-confidence wants you to purport that you are, you can learn things and, and mm -hmm. be open in a way, even if it's self-deprecating and, 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 and maybe puts you on a lower tier. Uh, Scott, what mm -hmm. do you think about that definition? Uh, yeah, that, Larry, that's... don't look it up on the internet. I know. No, I see. I no. see him. He's like <laughs> Google.com. Define humility. I feel it. I feel no. it. From Scott, what do you think? Humility is sort of like being genuine to your limitation. Ooh, I love that. That that is a musical way of putting it down. That's the name of your next album. There. That's yeah. the name of your next album. <laughs> genuine to your limitations by Dubshine. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Buffalo, what do you have as humility? Um, I said I would agree with what uh, Scott just said, and and mm. but what my puzzle is um, since I, I'm I try to bring everything down to a an evolutionary basis. How I mean, what would have led to this in the creation of the, the human mind? Uh, 
I, I wonder what the, what is the purpose of humility and mm. and at this point I would just say it's it's a counterbalance to the uh, the necessary uh, the necessity of of knowing where one's place is on the on the ladder uh, of with other people mm. um, that that somehow nature requires that uh, a balancing sort of idea but I don't have it all figured out. I, th- I feel where you're going with that. It's like the seesaw to what we were talking about in the first half of the show. We need to have striations. We need to have strata of people. We need to have people of value here, here, and here. And humility is like, that doesn't really matter. Uh, like none of these things are illusions. And if I'm there, I don't want to be at the top. Like I, I exist equally with everybody else. I'm not any better than anyone else. There's a the humility. I, I, think, I, I think it adds to an ecological balance is what mm. it does. Mm. And in the case, in case to biology, to me, uh, in biology, usually we, we know the least probably about e- ecological systems because they're so complex, they're so integrated. Mm. Uh, but they, when they really represent a balance. And to me, okay. the counterpoint in humankind is empathy. And to me, humility leads into empathy. And it, it probably has an ancient purpose in our, our wiring in our brain. Larry, I'd like to get your definition of humility, and then we can get to Scott's question real quick. What do you got? No, I'd just like to say, George, that was very, very well put. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I think it's uh, recognizing your humanity or your membership in humanity and and its many imperfections. Mm. uh, Imperfections is a big part. And going from there. Yeah. Scott, what do you think? What was your... uh... I was going to say, it seems to be, again, a social component to humility mm. like people like humble people mm. you know because kind of like if you're a know-it-all you know that that's a bad connotation to that if you're always talking super smart or super you know uber special people tend not to like you because it sort of makes them feel bad within themselves. Where were you for the last four years? That's uh, right. You're not paying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have yeah, some startling true. information to show you. That's a weird point though. That That's kind of paradoxical because I, I, I do feel like I've experienced directly um, when, you know, in my younger years, hearing a lot of people talk very, you know, I used to think atheists were arrogant, hmm. you know, and which is the opposite of humble because they seem to like know that religion was, was crap, you know? Hmm. And so, and, and a lot of religious people, even today, and I talk to them all the time, they, they don't like arrogant people. So there's a social component to it. But then again, they really like people like leaders that are very, you know, arrogant. So I just don't get it. It's almost like there's some sort of contradiction there. Mm -hmm. Man, you're raising some really great points. I have an offhand analogy. Let me just try to condense real quick. If self-esteem was a limited resource, we would, and we all had to share from the same pool of self-esteem, humble people are ones that we would like to have around us because they would be taking less of that resource compared to the ones that mm-hmm. we need, right? And in the same aspect, we tend to look at people who are boastful. Uh, I want to say braggadocious. I'm not even sure if that's an actual word. I feel like it is. It's one of those weird third grade. Yeah, we all no, understand okay, it anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like just terrible jerk-like, but <clears throat> magnanimous, you know, people, they look like they have so much self-esteem that I don't need this pool of limited self-esteem resources. I will just hang out with this guy. So there's the appeal of, hey, if I just hang out with this very confident person, I can feed off of their confidence and I'm part of them. I'm part of that group. Likewise, there's the idea of, I like being around humble people because that means potentially more uh, more self-esteem for me. But I also feel like on the, on the true benevolent point of view, the true benevolent point of view, there is the idea of we laud loud, confident people a lot, but they tend to outshine the people who do the best work, which are the cautious, uh, humble, 
thoughtful, critical thinking leaders that we have. We can always say a Mussolini and Hitler or Trump, we can like name them off the top of our head, but we were very rarely to bring up like a Kennedy or Obama or like uh, Hamilton. Like the, like the, I know we just had a Broadway play, but no one was talking about Hamilton before then. No one was saying anything about mm-hmm. Hamilton before then. Right. But we, we tend to forget the, the quiet people who do a lot of good work in, in the shadows, or at least, you know, don't make a big show of it. And we tend to, to at least remember the really loud people, at least as a, a warning signal for what to stay away from. The so, enterprise of science seems to be grounded oh, in humility. Absolutely. Yeah. How many scientists can we name off the top of our head that like made half the things that we're around right now? No, and you'd crazy. have to, when everybody around you is criticizing or uh, looking at your work critically, I'll put it that way. Yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. I think, Buffalo, I'd love to get your feedback on this. We're both scientists, right? Do you think you would only garner worse, att- <laughs> worse attention on your articles if you went out with every article being like, and I'm the best scientist who ever scienced ever. <laughs> this is the best article. No one else knows. It's like, ooh, you were just asking for more. You're asking for more. <laughs> Never getting told us again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, to my, my experience in science is, is the braggadocious scientists are usually left behind pretty quickly. Yeah. Because they're, yeah. they're not trusted. And, right. and for good reason. And for good reason. Yeah. Uh, my question always is, uh, you know, in, in matters of science, when somebody describes an experiment, I say, well, what were the controls, and how many controls were there? And to me, that 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 represents humility in science. Yeah. That you don't really know, so you really should be careful. I also get weirded out whenever someone names a variable after themselves. I don't know if you ever see that, but it's just like, <laughs> yeah. why are you naming this thing after you? Like, oh, come on, man. Just call it, just call it pie. You don't have to be Mr. Brandon's pie. Like we don't have to call it Brandon's pie. Just call it what it is. Come on. We already have words for things. I'm just searching uh, for immortality. <laughs> <laughs> they are. It's always better when like you have like, for example, an element named after a scientist who's like already dead, passed away, and we're just mm-hmm. doing it to honor this woman or man. That's great. But there are a lot of elements that were discovered that are like Berkelium. Californium and like Harvard's <laughs> trying to come up with one too, and it's like Harvard. It's like, oh, stop, stop! <laughs> Don't do that to science, man. Who cares about your school? Let's just use these as milestones to like honor great advancements moving forward, and not tuition rates that you want to have in what is inherently a really, really bad education loan system that I don't want to get into right now. Anyway, uh, fun topic, fun topic, fun topic. I want to get into is things. Well, we got, we got 10 minutes left. Things that you know you can do better than God or things that you know you can do that are more impressive than God. And this was a short list that came up with Bruce. We'll go to Larry first. Uh, the idea behind this list is, can you name something that you think you can do in a more impressive manner than God? Larry, we'll go to you first. Good things. Oh, shoot. Go for it. So the first thing, show up. <laughs> I'm here all the time, 24-7. I'm here. And he hasn't shown up a single time in my 70 years. Um, number two, write a better Bible. Oh. If, if you go to my, my blog, digitalfreethought.com blog, uh, I, I have a book that says uh, what the Bible should have looked like. Um, depending on, you know, if it was acting like an omniscient, um, all powerful God, Mm. or as um, some micromanaging warlord, which Mm. is what it looks like. But anyway, those are my my two cents. Show up. That's a great one. Write a better Bible. Number two, George, what do you got? I'm better at being humble than God is. Better at being humble. humble. Better at, I'm writing these down, being <laughs> humble. Are you saying you're the most humble? <laughs> I am the most humble He's person. The best humble person in the world. It's always hard best to be humble the most person humble, humble, right? Like, yeah. I feel like I, I used to be, uh, uh, Champion. I used to be arrogant, but now I'm perfect. <laughs> I'll tell you this. If I was a God, I'd be a trickster God. And the only thing I would do is I would randomly give people trophies that say most humble, 2020 or 2021 i'll just randomly give one person a, a random trophy and i'd be like i wasn't even trying to get this trophy but i guess that's the point right oh okay well i guess i'll put it on my shelf and then it disappears like <laughs> as soon as they put the trophy anywhere to like show to other people it's gone it's gone that that's the way how i'd operate uh i have too much fun buffalo what is your uh thing that you know you can do more impressive than god well, I don't, I don't believe in, in God, a God, or I didn't ask that question. What can you do more impressive than yeah, pick your guy? I, I, I got you, but, but that's, that's my purpose. 
Okay. Uh, uh, and so when I and I and I studied nature for my entire life, and I don't I know that I don't understand anything absolutely about nature, and so you know I I uh, I don't think I could do anything better than nature. But the question is, what can you do better? Can you please have fun with this obviously hypothetical question? What is your thing you can do better than God, who is not nature, who's obviously a caricature that we are referring to as a group of atheists? What is your yeah, thing? Yeah, okay, okay. Pay, pay less attention to history because history is what, what bogs down religion. Pay less attention to history. Pay less attention to history. That's an interesting one. So what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, uh, you know, religions, most religions, as we know it, are stuck in history. And, mm. and why they, well, they strive to, to, uh, to, to modernize, to evolve, mm. socially evolve, they can't because they need to fill the pews. And, uh, and, and so there's a contradiction there. It's, it's, uh, so I think if they, uh, well, I'd have to think this through a little bit more, but um, I don't think I can do anything I, I'm, I, I consider myself to be a learning person, not a knowing person. Okay. It sounds mm. like your takeaway is like, Hey, I am future minded. I can look forward to things in the future. I can be, you know, not necessarily opp opportunistic, but what's the, not, what's the opposite of pessimistic, uh, in, in the sense that you're looking forward progressively and trying to and optimistic. Yeah. Is that optimistic? Okay. Well, that's what I meant by connotation. You're not, yeah drudged by the past you're looking forward to the future and i think that is in fact a nuanced better thing than uh a god can be yeah. i want to okay. get to scott i want to get to scott and then with time left we'll go to george scott what's your thing that you can do better than any uh god i'm not as needy as god not as like, needy oh yeah, like good. i don't need worship <laughs> i don't need to be demanding fantastic <laughs> that's true very very true yeah. uh I can't tell you how important that it actually is. That is a great thing. And I would say anything that does, demands worship isn't deserving of worship. In the first yes, time. indeed. George, what's your point? I'm a better atheist than God. <laughs> <laughs> Should I pry? What do you mean by that? Uh, George, you want to rely on you want to unpack that a little bit? Um, I am so godlike. I don't have to justify my words. I don't have to define them. Oh, well, there we go. Where was your humility thing? Didn't, were you, didn't you give us the other thing? I'm so humiliated. I'm so right. humiliated. <laughs> so... Mine, my two things were, one, I can admit I'm wrong and apologize, which isn't something that you get a lot from God. Mm. Uh, typically, when God like you know, performs an accidental or a purposefully accidental planned accidental genocide, he's like, okay, well, here's a rainbow. <sighs> Do, 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 do. And I'm like, we still got dead families and there's water everywhere. God is like, yeah, okay. Okay. Well, here's twice as many pigs. <laughs> here's an extra wife. I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't Kobe Bryant me. You can't cheat on me and then give me a diamond ring afterwards. It's like, no, this is, you need to apologize. We need to have some admission that you are wrong and, 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 and face me, you know, person to person and, and look me in the eyes and apologize. I can do that. And I've done that many times. My second point is I can make a better pork sandwich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's all about that. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. You don't get that a lot. Uh, I wouldn't create things that are going to suffer and die. I know that. Like, if, if I know that the only way my creations can have free will is if they decide to go to hell, I don't think I would just create anything. I wouldn't need, feel the need to do that. To yeah. Something, just being. So on that same line, um, I'm willing to pick up other people's trash, right? Like I'm willing, if I see like a water bottle on the ground and there's a trash can nearby, I'll pick up the water bottle and I'll throw it away. Uh, with COVID, I have not done that as much, but I used to do go around with a bag just to pick up trash around my neighborhood, just for fun, just to be able to walk outside. And I'm looking forward to actually doing that again, to be honest with you. But it goes back to the idea of, you know, if you saw like a seal with like fishing line, you know, wrapped around its body and, and, and cutting into its skin. There's a group of people who just go to beaches just to free the pollutants that are wrapped around uh, marine life, including seals and stuff. And it's like, one, why have a system where 
you know, there are animals that are suffering needlessly, innocent creatures needlessly suffering. And two, why isn't a God automatically vaporizing that kind of pollutants on these innocent animals? It's human beings who are going out and yeah, human beings created the pollution, but there are also a group of humans that are also going out and trying to resolve that as well. And I feel like that's better. A person that recognizes there's a problem and trying to fix a problem that they are in part involved in creating than a being that's all powerful and choosing not to do anything whatsoever. And I feel like that makes in a large part humanity better than a lot of the God claims that have been purported or presented to us. Larry, we're running down to the bottom of the show. I'm going to do a quick rundown. Dubshine, where can we find your stuff at? Please go to dubshine.bandcamp.com and <laughs> check my album out, man. It's called nice. Collapse Reality, and it's brand new, and I'm excited about it. Well, you got to be more excited when you say that. I'll I know, you. right? Take two. You just sound I'm tired. Excited. There you Get go. It. There you go. My album today. Yeah, I just put out a new song. I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, it's called yes. Invincible. And uh, for a long time, I've been making music that's been skewing towards different genres. But like, I found like I really do like the mix of, and here's the weird word salad that we're going to come up with, but like mm -hmm. African world beats meets Dave Matthews meets mm -hmm. Everclear, sort of like 90s staple rock mixed with African beats at the same time too. It's a mm -hmm. very weird mixture. And there's some shonen Japanese rock, anime rock in there too. A little bit of <laughs> here. It's like, oh, but it well, it's so well. It's so, it feels it like did. it's so fun. I, lo I loved it. I, I love appreciate it. it. I appreciate it. Uh, George, you had mentioned the book Sapiens. Where can people get that book at? Or what is the, who wrote that book? Uh, his name is Yuval Noah Harari. Nice. Uh, and, and just, just Google Hey Sapiens. I, it's, it's an excellent book. Nice. It, it, it uh, puts a lot of things into perspective, geology, biology, um, human. Well, it's entitled, uh, the subtitle is A Brief History of hu uh, Humankind. Very cool. Very cool. Nice. Uh, George, Brooklyn, you got anything you would recommend? You had mentioned that you got in a fight with someone. How did you get over the fight? What, what were your tips? Oh, I haven't gotten over the fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, boy, I was going to say something, and I have forgotten. I'm too old. All right. I'll share some wisdom with you, George. We'll see maybe if this helps. Whenever I get in an argument, even if it's like a very non-volatile argument, just like a, a silly thing someone told me, I always remember something that uh, my mom used to say where she would look in her rear view mirror and there was a little message that says, objects in rear view are larger than they appear and takes distance before them to get back to the regular size, right? And yes. that's a lot of the times when I argue with someone, it's like, ooh, I'm so upset when I'm looking, am I seeing it for what it is or am I looking in that rear view mirror, you know? And I feel like a lot of people should just recognize that a little bit of time puts everything to perspective. Uh, Doubter five. I have a really serious problem. Listen, I went to the drugstore and I said, do you guys have any atheism here? And they're like, we don't have any atheism here. I'm like, am I, what's going on? Am I even in the right store? It's like, no, you got to go to the library. So I went to the library and they're like, do you guys have atheism here? It's like, no, we don't, we only have books here, sir. I'm like, ah, oh, libraries are useless. And then I went to the grocery store. I was like, do you have any atheism? Like we got bananas. And I'm like, I'll take a banana, but I'm still looking for <laughs> atheism and I don't know what it's all about. What can I do? Help me out. Well, when I'm in the drugstore, the store, there's plenty of atheism there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, matter of fact, I've taken my book, and I, I assume that's what you're referring to, uh, to the library locally and offered to give them a few copies for the shelves, and they would not take it. <gasps> Gasp. You know, they, uh, they said, no, it's got to go through a process, which is just an excuse for saying we don't want to put atheist books on the Knoxville uh, library shelves. Uh, they, they have one or two by Dawkins or Hitchens, but, you know, those are widely circulated bestsellers and they feel obligated I'm sure to put them there but I'm a local artist and they're supposed to put local artists on there mm. they, they won't take my atheist book and put it on the shelf anyway it's called atheism what it's all what's it all about and it's available on Amazon <clears throat> 
If you have questions for the show, you can send them by email to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. We'll answer them on future shows. If you're having trouble relieving religious beliefs behind, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. And this has been uh, your last episode so far of the Digital Free Thought Radio <laughs> Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. Even mine. Don't worry about it because the time to worry Even about mine. it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye.